Previously on MasterChef, you will all have to cook Japanese classics. The top seven faced a sushi tag team oh, challenge, switch. controlled by Luca. You want to see go home tonight is who? <sighs> Natasha. It pushed the home cooks to their limit. You don't do the tuna. It doesn't matter about looks. It does matter, kind of a little bit. Don't ask me, just do it. And when Luca's plan backfired. Bloody good effort. I'm coming for you, you're my next target. It came down to Eddie and Jesse. The person leaving MasterChef tonight. Eddie. Tonight, a shocking twist blows the competition wide open. Welcome back. Taunton Tiger, beaming. This home cook went home way too early. Lynn and my favorite vegetarian, Bree. Now, one of these fallen home cooks... It's raw. ...will win their way back into the Master Chef kitchen. Nothing is going to stand in my way of getting that white apron. I wanted a shot to redeem myself. I'm gonna knock it off the park. The person coming back is... Top six is a beautiful feeling. Last year, they got kicked out, and now I'm one of the best home cooks in America. The final six, all of you, congratulations. It's an amazing achievement. But as you know in MasterChef, things can change in an instant. Tonight, you will not be cooking. That's right. All of you, please head up to the gallery. Gordon says you're not cooking today. Well, what the hell are we doing then? I don't know if this is gonna be good or bad. Let's go. You six may not be cooking tonight, but there will be some people cooking, people with very familiar faces. Lovely. That's right. Each of us has invited back one of the home cooks that has already left the competition. This is bad. There were some really good people that were eliminated too early, so there are a lot of people that I do not want to walk through those doors. Those three will then do battle for a white apron and a spot back in this competition. Gordon, who are you giving a second chance to? The home cook that I decided to bring back has a very strong mind and an even stronger palate. Welcome back. My favorite vegetarian, Reese. Welcome back, my darling. I only got eliminated just recently, and I definitely feel like I went too soon. So I'm absolutely honored that Gordon wanted to bring me back. Did you miss me? No. Of all people, Brie, seriously? Ugh. I will take her on any day, head to head, and I will cook her little vegan ass under the table. Now, for my choice, I thought this home cook went home way too early. He's the real deal in real competition, guys. Welcome back. Lynn. Lynn is back. Damn it. He is an awesome cook. More or less, this is Lynn's apron to win back. This Go home, Lynn. When I was eliminated, you could almost hear people give that sigh of relief. And now that I'm back, I can't wait to show what I'm going to do. So the final home cook, like me, I feel they put emotion into every dish that they plate. It's a toss up between the third, who I think is coming back. Betty could be coming back. Bethy could be coming back. I have no idea at this point. Standing at 5 foot 11. 295 pounds. Welcome back. The Taunton Tiger. Beamy. Oh, God, it's Beamy. Uh, is this a joke? Beamy is just a loser. Ooh. He's like the cockroach that won't die after you step on it multiple times. Luca, stop clapping. <laughs> stop clapping. I like Beamy. Yo, just when you thought I was down, man, I'm back, boom, boom, back, baby. Ready to knock out the competition. You think they're intimidated? Should be. <laughs> <laughs> Only one of you will win back this. A MasterChef apron. One apron, three of you. 
There is nothing in the world that I want more than to get my white apron back. I let myself down last time, and I want the chance to earn it back. The three of you will now compete in a high-impact, high-speed challenge. After the first challenge, one of you will be eliminated, and three will become two. Those two will cook head-to-head -head in the culinary battle of your lives. Ready to see what you're going to have to cook? Yes, yes chef. chef. When you enter the luxurious MasterChef pantry, you'll have just five minutes to grab everything you need. Your time in the pantry starts now. I really miss the MasterChef pantry. It has everything you could ever dream of. To be able to just think something up and then go in and get whatever you need for it, it's a beautiful thing. Oh my gosh. What the? Is this, this is it? What the clock is this? It's just like eggs everywhere. What? No way. Open the other side. Look at this. I don't know what you're cooking, but I think I'm cooking eggs. I think I got enough eggs. This is Master Chef. You never have enough, man. <sighs> Do not trip. <laughs> you look like a chicken. <laughs> if you haven't guessed it, you will be cooking us eggs. We're looking for a perfect egg, sunny side up. No burned edges, no hard yolks. Beautifully set white with a yolk that's cooked from the bottom up. But we're not just looking for one. You have 15 minutes to cook us as many perfectly fried sunny side up eggs as you can. Wow. <laughs> Please, head to your stations. <clears throat> At your stations, you have 100 plates and 12 identical 8-inch pans. You also get to use two stoves. Are you ready? Yes, yes chef. Yes, chef. Your time starts. Now. Eight pans, eight burners. How would you start this off, Greg? Uh, I would lay out all my pans, get the first one started off cold, and then from there, start rotating. By the time the last egg goes in, the first egg should be cooked. It's all about working the stove. Technique, volume, speed. We're really bringing these cooks to the test with this challenge. Beanie's getting more organized than anyone because mm -hmm. he's laying out his place, he's getting his yep. pans warm. My worry there is if he starts cracking those eggs in those hot pans, the eggs are going to blister. You guys going to do oil or butter in here? I put my oil in first and then finish with the butter because right, the yeah. butter froths mm -hmm. and it starts cooking that raw egg white closest mm -hmm. to the yolk. Beanie's putting his butter in there now. That butter, it does burn a lot faster than mm -hmm. that oil does, so... Beanie hasn't even put an egg in yet. He's using butter. What an idiot. That's why he doesn't deserve to be here. This is going to be a tough fight, getting a second chance. I'm going up against some top dogs. But, you know, I'm looking to get past this, get head to head with whoever it is, Lynn or Bree. I'm ready. Come on, let's go. Bree, you got a little bubbling going on over here. Drop your heat on some of them. Thank you. Look at Lynn's. Lynn's doing it right now. This is the most stressful MasterChef challenge I can even remember, but these eggs determine my future in MasterChef. I'm gonna give it everything I have, take no prisoners, and get my apron back. Oh, look how good Lynn's already doing. I don't want Lynn back in this competition. I don't want to face Lynn. I don't want to watch Lynn cook, because Lynn's the top dog down there, and I don't want to see him back. Lynn's already playing up. Damn, he's flying. <laughs> The judges have chosen Beanie, Bree, and Lynn to battle it out for a single white apron. Long go. The two home cooks that fry the most perfectly executed sunny side up eggs in 15 minutes will go head to head for a second chance to get back into the Master Chef kitchen. 10 minutes to go. Come on, guys. You've got to speed up. Get your pans working for you guys. There should never be an empty pan. You know, I got two preheated ovens. I might as well use them because they're a heat source and see if that gives me a leg up. Let's hope I don't screw those up. Let's go get them on the plate. Should be able to slide them right out. Let's go, Lynn. Come on. Get another egg in that pan. Don't let these overcook, Lynn. 
Time management has always been my biggest issue. And in the MasterChef kitchen, 15 minutes might as well be a blink of an eye. Come on, you've got to be quick. Closest plate to you, Brie. Always the way. Uh, Back yes, on the chef. heat. Good. Yes, there you go. Chef. You got to put everything you got, get them on the plate. Think of cooking for your daughters. Breakfast time. I started off, I think, a little bit shaky because, you know, I was trying to be too gentle. And it's just like, you know what? I know what I'm doing in here. You know what I mean? There's no need to be gentle. So I'm just throwing everything out the window and just keep it moving, you know? And everything is starting to roll a little bit smoother right now. He's going quicker than I thought he would. Let's go. Work the pan. You've got to multitask. That's it. Slide them out. That's it. Open your plates up. Come on, let's go, guys. Oh. No, 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 no. Wow, fascinating. Lynn's using the ovens, too. Wow. What happens with an egg in the oven? It starts it's to cook the on the outside. The whole idea. Sunny side up, no heat for the top. Lynn is the kind of guy that could take me out of the competition, but I've experienced firsthand that Lynn definitely cracks under pressure. Two minutes to go. Speed up. Now you want to raise up your burners in the last two minutes to make sure those last eggs get cooked in time. Anything that's not out of the pan when the time is up does not qualify. Come on. This challenge, it is about technique and speed. And it's going to take a lot of accuracy. And there's also a lot of pressure. Oh. Come on, guys. Ten, nine, eight. Seven. Come on, guys. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Put it down, baby. Hands in the air. Well done. I see how many plates I put out, and I'm pretty happy with the number. I just hope that I have enough perfectly cooked sunny side up eggs. You have 27 plated. Me, Gordon, and Graham will now take a look at these eggs and see how many are perfect sunny side up eggs. How many do you think? I think most of them will pass. Mm. Let's take a look, shall we? This one's raw. It's definitely under. And this one's under. definitely raw. Agreed. These two. I mean, under. literally raw. You can just see with your eyes. If those two eggs didn't pass, there's going to be trouble down the line for me. Perfect. Perfect. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's just the perfect yolk. It's cooked. Mm -hmm. It's not burnt edges. Nice. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Here's another good one. Let this one pass. I think it looks good. Good. It's crispy. It's so fried, it looks like a taco. No good. No. Completely seared. Uh, Crispy. Seared the bottom. It's tough. That's not even a fried egg. Pan too hot. It's gonna be a heavy trash. I am rooting for more smashing. Yeah, get him out of here, Joe. Keep smashing. This one. Yeah, gone. Every time I hear the crash, it's almost as if there's no other sound except my dreams dying one plate at a time. You sure you can't pass this one? Not sunny side up. Oh, God. Wow. So, you have eight perfect sunny side up eggs. I thought you were gonna nail more than eight eggs. But at the end of the day, guys, eight may be enough. Let's find out. All I can hope now is that when the judges get the brie and beamy, that they'll trash more eggs than they trashed on mine. If you get more than eight perfectly cooked, sunny side up eggs, you'll be safe and through to the next stage of this extraordinary challenge. Lynn only got eight out of 27. Those are really bad chances. They obviously must be judging really toughly today. Visually, raw. Mm -hmm. that is raw. This thing here, it's almost got its feathers on. <laughs> Too raw, that's not a good start, is it? Nice. That's good. That looks good. Nice. That's a good one. Wow. That's perfect. That's four already. Textbook. 
This one, split yolk, crispy. Trash. Nice. That was pretty. Beautiful. Seven. Too crispy. Mm -hmm. Too crispy. Take it away. That's really nice. Gorgeous. Look at the white sap. Beautiful. OK. Eight. So now you are tied with Lynn. One more, and you go to the one-on-one. -on -one. OK, I can do this. There's still a bunch of eggs left, and I have to have a perfect one out there. I don't know what you did there, but... Perfect. So that's nine. Congratulations. Thank you. Three. Three. Perfect. Ten. Stunning. Eleven. Stunning. Twelve. Thirteen. These are too crispy. Lucky thirteen. Oh. No matter what happens with Beamy's eggs, you are through to the next round. Yeah, this sucks. Now I just have to hope that Beamy messed up worse than I did. Beamy, how many did you actually get on the plate? 32. So, the question is, can you beat Lynn's total of eight? I think I got nine in there. All right, let's check them out. This isn't going to work. Two of these were all ready. Seared Chris with raw in the middle. I've never seen an egg like that. Crispy on the bottom, overcooked, and raw, raw on top. top. This is the worst start we've had. This is embarrassing. Hey, Lynn, things might be looking up for you. For a second chance at a white apron, Lynn, Bree, and Beamy cooked as many perfect sunny side up eggs as possible in 15 minutes. Looks fine. Mm -hmm. Not sure. Mm -hmm. Bree has moved on to the next round with 13, leaving Beamy to see if he can beat Lynn's eight. You got a bikini. This is good. It's three. Four intact. Mm -hmm. Another beautiful one. Uh -huh. So, so far, we have five, and nine is the magic number. Yes. Great, this burnt. This is gone. Crispy. Oh, that's really bad. It's so I think this is mine. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Nice. That's a good one. Seven. One more egg, and you're tied with Lynn. Yes. I'm really nervous. I can hardly watch. I just turn away because my only hope is that Beamy dropped the ball. Nice. I think that's, that's going to tie it. Tying run. And then look where we get back to. These are all raw, Beamy. Is there a winning egg in the bunch? Just one. I just need one perfect egg. Come on. There's got to be at least one in it. What do you think? Lynn, I know I brought you back. But you're going home. That's nine. Perfect. Yes. Woo! I got this. I did it. All the haters up there is just like, you know what? Keep hating. Lynn, please take your apron off and say a final goodbye to the Master Chef Kitchen. <sighs> Love being here, guys. Good luck. Good night, Lynn. I forget about Lynn. I think he's not gonna have eggs for breakfast tomorrow morning. I'm surprised that Lynn's walking out of those doors. I'm also relieved that Lynn's walking out of those doors. It's gonna be an interesting battle. Congratulations on making it through that 15 minutes of intense pressure. Are you ready for your final challenge? Yes, Chef. Sure. You six up there have a reservation in the MasterChef restaurant. 
please take your aprons off and go into the Master Chef restaurant. Thank you. Mm. Beam and Brie, please come with us. Round two. Last hopes are in this challenge. They're two strong cooks in their own each individual ways, but it really depends on what these two have to cook. I'm not sure who's going to come out on top. Beamy and Bree, welcome to the most amazing Master Chef restaurant, where tonight, in this room, your fate will be decided. Chrissy, Luca, Jesse, James, Natasha, Jordan, you will be judging this head-to-head -head challenge alongside Mr. Joe Bastian. You know what's funny is when this all started, I would have been so uncomfortable with judging food, but after having it done so many times to me and everyone else, like, I feel like I could do a decent job at it. And it was pretty exciting. Their decision will come down to one thing, the dish. This is going to be a blind taste test. It's a blind tasting. We have no idea if Beamy made one dish or Brie made one dish, so we're strictly going off flavor. I'm coming in here. I definitely didn't feel no love, so I'm glad that they're going to be tasting blind because they're going to find out Beamy's not a fake. The eliminated contestant who receives more votes will regain their apron. Right now, Brie and Beamy's hopes of getting another chance in this competition are literally in your hands. Please, all of you, take a seat. This blind tasting levels the playing field. We're just going to vote for what we think is the best dish. Are you two ready to find out what you have to cook? Yes. Sure. Yes, Come this way. Bree, you are about to go head-to-head -head in the biggest battle of your lives. This is a once-in-a-lifetime second chance. The most important piece of this epic battle is an amazing ingredient, something worthy of the world's finest restaurants. It will take all of your culinary skills, brain, and brawn to cook with this most incredible, this most beautiful, the freshest, King Salmon. <laughs> These beauties are caught while trolling off the coast of Alaska. Undoubtedly, the greatest salmon in the world. These fish in front of you cost over $500 a piece. Wow. You'll need to break down one of these amazing salmon each and then make seven perfect salmon dishes using those fillets. We want a pan-seared crispy skin side up with a perfect hollandaise sauce. We also want to see some beautiful asparagus and potatoes. This is a true culinary showdown. I'm headed back into the restaurant to join your fellow competitors. Let your dish do the talking and let me wish you good luck. Please take off your aprons. Bimi, you're blue. Yes. Brie, you're red. Thank you, Chef. You'll have just 60 minutes to cut your fillets and cook seven perfect identical salmon dishes. Come over here, pick up your fish, and head back to your stations. Um, oh, my God, dead body. I have two fillet this fish, cook it, prepare all my sides, make a hollandaise sauce, and plate seven portions of it in one hour? This is the ultimate pressure test. And I'm feeling a little nervous. Bree, Beamy, are you both ready? Yes, yes, Chef. You guys need to cook better than you ever have cooked before. Your 60 minutes start now. Across 60 minutes claim, even for a professional chef, tonight, this would be a tough call. Absolutely. That's a monster to take down. The first thing I'd do across the 60 minutes, I'd fill it one side. The secret to filleting a great salmon is you've got to let the knife do the work. You can't. 
can't start hacking and getting stuck with that rib cage. So, clean your knife every time you slice it. You've got to turn it around. Let the dorsal fin sit in front of you, turning the fish around as it suits you. Your knife and your hand have to move simultaneously. So your knife is guided by the top of your hand so you're not slashing. I have to get my second portions ready. Cook it on top of the stove, and the salmon goes on the plate at the very last minute. I cannot believe what Bree's doing. I mean, you're going in at it backwards. I mean, she's upside down, almost like she's slicing a cake as opposed to filleting. Yeah, it looks just like a cake. Whereby Beamy, look, he's thing. coming off with one big beautiful fillet. Mm -hmm. And just how much easier do you think his world's going to be? Slicing through this fish like butter, and it's just like you know what? Right now. This is going smoothly for me, you know? So I'm excited about this. I think I think I got the edge. We need to clean and fillet this giant, giant Alaskan king salmon. Still has its eyes, and then I have to stare at it. It is gross. I feel like I'm completely screwed right now. Tonight, Beanie and Bree are cooking seven portions of king salmon with potatoes asparagus, and hollandaise sauce. Joe and the remaining six contestants will judge their dishes in a blind tasting and decide who will return to the Master Chef Kitchen. This is a big opportunity for me, man. You know, it's for my daughters. I'm not just cooking for me. There's no way that I could fail right now. It feels like I never left, because it hasn't been that long since I got eliminated, so there is nothing that is going to stand in my way of getting that white apron. Nothing and no one. Right, Corey, how are you doing? I'm doing okay, Chef. Good. How many portions you got there now? So you got so two, now, four, six, eight. eight. Good. Correct, yeah. I want to be able to have a backup. Look at the size of those salmon. Understand how long they take to cook. Skin side down, nice and crispy. And then... Flip it and kiss it. Exactly. How are you cooking the potatoes? I am uh, roasting them in the oven, and then I'm going to finish them off in the pan with Good. a little bit of rosemary and thyme. How are you cooking the asparagus? I am going to uh, quickly blanch and then grill the asparagus. Hollandaise? I'm going to start that, um, sure. you know, after I get the veggies and everything Good. else on. This is a very tough, extreme challenge. How confident are you? I'm not the most confident, but, you know, I'm, I'm not stopping at anything sure. in order to get this apron. Bree, Good luck. Thank you. Amy, how are we doing? I'm all right, all right, chef. Salmon, asparagus, potatoes, hollandaise. Yes. What are you doing to make your stand out? I'm gonna roast my asparagus in the oven. I'm doing a uh, garlic mashed potato with sour cream, a little bit of cheese, and you cheese know. Cheese with salmon? Well, that's like a steak side. Think of what the star of the dish is, right? Yeah, it's salmon. these salmon. They look beautiful, but it's gonna come down to you guys cooking that salmon. Yes, yeah, sure. Are you gonna throw it in the oven first? Are you gonna get it in a saute pan first? I'm gonna cook it all in a, on, a, on the pan. Remember how thick those are. Yeah. You, okay. Yep. This is like that second chance that mm -hmm. never comes. You know I believe in you, right? Thank you, Chef. Right? Yeah. We'll find a way to make this happen. Yep. Thank you, Chef. Bree is composed. Love the sound of what she did with the potatoes. What she roasted fingerlings with garlic, rosemary, and thyme. So right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What's Beamy doing for the potatoes? Mashed potatoes. The worst thing you'd ever want to do now with that hollandaise and that asparagus is a mash. Right. I just wonder if Beamy's been gone for too long and has forgotten some of those skills and that, that fight that you have to have. Just over 40 minutes gone, 20 minutes to go. Breeze, asparagus is already blanched. Mm -hmm. Potatoes in the oven, pretty much ready to go. Mm -hmm. She's got her holidays going. All she has to do is hear that salmon and then mm -hmm. start getting everything in its place to go. She seems very cool and collected right now. She wants back. Beanie is cutting his fish beautifully. I mean, they look regimental. Which means that they'll cook even more. Yeah, if you can get them in the pan soon enough. Yeah, exactly that. But they're a thick piece of salmon. Right. So if he hasn't got his salmon in there now, within the next five minutes, he's going to be screwed, you know? In life, you don't get too many second chances, man. In this competition, I got a second chance, and it's just like, I got to make the most of it, you know? I'm doing six things at once. My feet are cramping up. I'm sweating, but I am not thinking about anything except perfect plates and a white apron. Both of you got just over 10 minutes to go. So, I mean, it's a blind taste test right now. You know, the top six plus Joe have no idea whether it's coming from Beanie or Bree. This is the fairest way to get one of these two back in the competition. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The best day in MasterChef Kitchen, we all going to be judges. I'm like, hey, this is awesome. I'm really excited. Let's, let's get this started. 
I don't feel that anybody that they're bringing back is better than me. Amy has a lot of heart, passion, soul. I do think Bree is underestimated. I don't think people, a lot of people take her seriously. I know Bree's gonna kick his ass just because Beanie sucks at life. 60 seconds, come on. Let's go, Bree. 30 seconds to go, come on. Let's go, get them all done, guys. Come on, push. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, chance to return to the master chef competition let's go get them all done guys push Bree and beamy battle it out to feed joe and the current contestants in a blind taste test five four three two one and stop well done good job thank you chef here come the waiters guys i'm looking down at my seven dishes Feeling a little bit nervous about my sides, thinking that they could be a little bit under-seasoned, but I'm feeling really confident about my salmon, and knowing that's the hero of the dish, I'm feeling good. This was not easy, man. I put some amazing flavors in here. I'm tasting my potatoes, they taste great. My asparagus, they taste great. My hollandaise sauce is on the money, man. The salmon are seasoned very well, too. They're gonna love these flavors, man. Bree, Mimi, well done. Right now, the fate of your future in this competition rests in your fellow competitors' hands. Please, both of you, take a seat in the lounge and relax. Great job. You can eat. Enjoy it. So how do you think you did? I think the flavors are good. My plating could use a lot more work. What do you think? I think that the filet is OK. My asparagus is probably good. I can't remember if I put salt on it or not. So that's what I'm, like, freaking out about. Let's start with the red plate. Jordan. The red highs, I think, instantly I go to the fish. Great cook on it. I found no bones in mine. Uh, lack of seasoning, but it was throughout. I think with more sauce, the red plate would have would have came together quite well. James? I think the red plate, the salmon was cooked perfectly to my tasting. The potatoes were kind of bland. The asparagus was fine. The hollandaise was great. Just wish there was more of it. Natasha? Um, I think that the salmon was actually seasoned to my liking because I like the fish to shine, and it did so. And it's a perfect cook. As far as the asparagus, it's crunchy. It's the way that I like it. It's uh, still beautiful on its own. Maybe a little bit more salt. But I like the blue plate as well. My fish, I cut some big chunks, man. I flayed it beautiful. When they taste it, I think they're gonna like what they, what they taste, you know? Okay, the blue dish. Chrissy? My salmon was cooked beautifully. Potatoes on point. The hollandaise is like my ideal hollandaise. Yeah. It's perfect. I, I like it too, it's, it's very so buttery, buttery, it's rich. Love it. Jesse, what do you think? I enjoyed the salmon a lot. Um, the cook on everything on the plate was really good. It had such good flavor. I feel like they tasted their food more as they cooked it. OK, Luca? I want my salmon rare. The salmon is very overcooked. But the potatoes, I think they're cooked just perfectly, as much as the asparagus, because they still have this crunch. Overall, the size, you know, I, I wish I could switch this salmon and put it with this size. Whichever one of us gets in here, they did not make it easy for us, man. Yeah. With the blue dish salmon, the salmon itself is seasoned well, and the skin is crispy, and it's quite delicious. Obviously, the quality of the fish shows through. It's a very delicious, rich, buttery salmon. I think the hollandaise sauce is good. The asparagus, they seem to be maybe a tad undercooked. And the red plate salmon is um, very, very good. Uh, all things considered, it's very moist. The asparagus have excellent seasoning. Um, they're cooked very, very well. They still have a nice crunch to them, but they're not raw. Um, whoever cooked those asparagus really knew what they were doing. The potatoes, very well cooked, but they're kind of plain Jane. And the hollandaise sauce, 
has excellent flavor. I just wish there was more of it. So I thank you for your insightful, interesting assessments of each dish. Chrissy, why don't you go and vote first? I feel so honored judging these dishes, and um, I feel like I've grown so much as a cook that I've learned so much. I feel like my palate has gotten a lot stronger. The destiny of these two cooks is in our hands. This is awesome. This is what it feels like to be a judge, and it feels good. This is agonizing right now. Did I do enough? Did it make a strong enough argument for me to get back in the kitchen? I don't think I've ever been given a second chance in my life. And I am feeling the pressure. My heart is racing so fast. I'm just praying, please, please, please. All right, guys, results are in. Jimmy and Bree, congratulations to both of you. Both dishes work great. It was a huge challenge, and one of you certainly deserves your place back in the MasterChef competition. There were seven of us who tasted, six home cooks and myself, and the results are here in front of me in these envelopes. The first person to reach four votes, and you will rejoin the competition. The first vote. Blue. The second vote? Red. Third vote? Blue. Two blue, one red. Fourth vote? Red. This is close. Fifth vote? Red. That's three votes for Brie. Brie, the next vote, if it's red, confirms your re-entry into the MasterChef kitchen. And Bimmy, if it's red, you'll be leaving. The sixth vote. Wow. Damn. <laughs> Holy smokes. Whatever color is in this envelope, that person will be rejoining the biggest cooking competition in America. Good luck to you all. Yes, you did. You nervous? The person rejoining MasterChef tonight is... Unbelievable. Are you the next MasterChef? We'll be coming to a city near you soon. Go to Fox.com and apply for Season 5 now. Whatever color is in this envelope, that person will be rejoining the biggest cooking competition in America. Gordon Ramsay chose to bring me back. He saw a lot of potential and he thought that I went home too soon. I want to win today. I have to win. I have to honor him for choosing me and I need to make my culinary dream happen. Man, Graham decided to bring me back. That means a lot to me to have someone give me the second chance opportunity. It's really big and I'm very grateful for it. If I get in here, I'm going to win this thing for my daughters. Are you ready to know your fate? Yes. Yes, Chef. Coming back into the MasterChef competition is... So, the votes are in. And I can tell you all, it could not have been closer. The home cook re-entering the competition won by four votes to the losing cook's three votes. After tonight's blind taste test, all of you have brought back one person. Please, 
Welcome back. Three. Did you guys miss me or what? It's Bray. You know, can I not get this girl out of my life? You know, I can see that these people are pissed to have me back and that the competition is on. I'm not feeling defeated. I'm feeling encouraged, uh, motivated to keep going. Bree, you know, she won today. Congratulations to Bree. She deserves it. Congratulations to Bree. My reality is I want to be a great chef, and I leave here feeling like I got this. <laughs> Welcome back. Congratulations. Welcome back. Thanks, Chef. How'd you feel? I feel great. Well done. Thank you. You're joining the Talented Six. If you had one individual right now that you'd love to take down, who would it be? It's always going to be Chrissy. Chrissy. <laughs> I'll go head to head with you anytime, sweetheart. All right. Anytime, any place, all the way back to Philly, I'll kick your ass. <laughs> all right. All seven of you, you're here for a reason. Now, the competition is seriously on. I think that all of the other contestants look really nervous, and they realize that, you know, I'm a serious competitor. I'm back, and I want this more than ever. Throw me whatever you got. Next time on MasterChef, the competition turns foul. Shut up. There are birds all over the place. If I have to kill it, I'll kill it with my bare hand. Hold on to us! The home cooks spread their wings. Come on, guys. I have no idea what I'm doing. You're in big trouble. In a race for a spot in the top six. This is cutthroat right now. Stop. And one more Master Chef hopeful. I think this has been your worst performance. Sees their dream come to an end. Say goodbye. One potato, two potato.